Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit. It is Friday, as my friend Angie says, Friday, July the 12th, 2024 at 6.05 a.m. I hope you're ready for a great weekend. This morning, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, and the title is, Though Many Oppose Me. Though Many Oppose Me. That's probably startling and we need to deal with it. So, your weather for today while people are rolling in, 77 degrees on the way to 87 for a high, 50% chance of rain this morning, 35% this afternoon, light and variable winds. Kind of sounds like a standard format Sunday or uh, summer afternoon, doesn't it? And Sunday, let me invite you, if you're local <clears throat> and you are not already attending a Bible-believing church, uh, let me ask you to join me Sunday at 10 a.m. at our home in the Hollow Dome, the Holiday Inn on Walden Road in Beaumont, Texas at 10 a.m. I'll be in the fifth chapter of Daniel. And if you don't know where the phrase came from, the writing on the wall, what it means and how it's spiritually significant and how it applies to you, join me 10 o'clock Sunday morning for that. We'll have a great time of worship. Then we'll look at God's word together. And I hope you find you a new home. <clears throat> so join us for that. Now, though many oppose me, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, the verse says this. Paul is speaking to the Corinthians in the close of his letter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, and he is telling them about his situation. And he says, and I quote, there is a wide open door for a great work here, although many oppose me. Just let that settle in, will you? There is a wide open door for a great work here, although many oppose me. So here we go. Great opportunity nearly always comes with great risk. Great opportunity does always come <clears throat> with great opposition. My understanding of why God doesn't nuke Satan right now is that he's holding off to give us and others a chance to repent. I'm very, very grateful for that. But the downside of that is that while we are here in this world, there is never an absence of spiritual warfare and opposition. Even if you're on the side of evil, you will be opposed by God, the angels, the Holy Spirit, and real believers. But for us, the story is about the fact that believing Christians who are serving the Lord will have spiritual opposition in this world and in this life. From Satan, from his minions, and from humans who are on his side. This is such a truism that a huge portion of an entire chapter of our New Testament is about our armor and our weapons for this opposition and warfare. God wouldn't spend time and effort giving us armor and weapons and instructing us on how to use them if we were not going to be in a fight. And regrettably, <clears throat> the greater your work for the Lord, the greater the opposition you get. True statement. Paul is in Ephesus when he writes this. There is a great work going on in Ephesus, and so there was a great opposition. Paul could have surrendered. Please think of this. Please understand this. Paul was human. He could have surrendered. He could have dialed it back to reduce the opposition and the pain he went through. But he went all in. And as we're using the phrase these days, be like Paul. He went all in. And because he went all in and was not intimidated by the opposition, you and I are blessed for it. Not to mention the people in Ephesus and those in the troubled fledgling church at Corinth. So I've taken the time to distill some takeaways uh, from this verse for you. There are seven as I count them this morning. Might want to think through these. Number one, as a believing Christian who is serious about his or her faith, never make peace under defeat. Just don't do it. Never make peace under defeat. Number two, <clears throat> never surrender. Number three, never give up. Those two sound similar, but they're not. They're different. Never surrender. Never give up. Never give up applies more to going on the offensive. Never make peace under defeat. Never surrender. Never give up. Number four, always fight. Always fight. Take it to the enemy. Always fight. Number five, always use your God-given armor and weapons. Number six, always remember the fight has eternal consequences. And number seven, always remember that lives are hanging in the balance. <clears throat> There's an old song called Bringing in the Sheaves, and I want to share the second verse with you right now. Sowing in the sun, sowing meaning to plant, sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Oh, why not? The third verse is really good too. 
going forth with weeping, sowing for the master. Though the loss sustained, our spirit often grieves. Is that powerful or what? Going forth with weeping, sowing for the master. Though the loss sustained, our spirit often grieves. When our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome, and we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. And if you're not familiar with the old-time English word, sheaves means your harvest, your fruit, your produce. Though the loss sustained, our spirit often grieves. I can tell you from my experience, it sure is a true statement, but I can tell you this. There is no greater thing than serving the Lord who loved you first, who saved your soul, who gave you eternal life, and who gives you abundant life. Let me pray for us. Father, help us today to never surrender, never give up, always fight, and always take it to the enemy, and always use our weapons <clears throat> and our armor that you gave us. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Bind us close to you and to each other today for your glory and for the blessing of your people. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. God bless you.